Hi folks, welcome to another episode of NYC CNC. I am long overdue for an update and um, I have to confess, I normally never uh, have a messy shop. I just don't believe in it, but um, today I have a very messy shop. Culmination of some new stuff coming in. I've been waiting for some pieces of the puzzle to, to fall into place on how to organize the shop. I've got some projects up in the air. Last night, my miter saw blew a fuse and I had to switch out a power, um, a breaker. So it's been a little bit of a mess, but I uh, wanted to give you a quick update on some new stuff. And I'll be honest, I don't even remember when I last left off, but um, I threw together a little standing workbench over here. You can see the lathe is on it now, along with a small belt sander. I don't think either one of those things are going to stay there, but um, they're there for right now. I still have this temporary table here, which I've got to get rid of soon. I picked up these little gray bins at Ikea for $40 while I was shopping for other things, saw them, and they're great for just organizing stuff. Um, I'm a big fan of trying to stay organized. That's kind of the thing I've got going on right now, and so um, I think I'll use those. I can't remember whether I showed you my portable bin cart, but I picked this up from Harbor Freight for about a hundred bucks and it is great. It's got something like 40 or 80 bins, which I use. It's great because you can wheel it around, tuck it back in the corner when you're done. Um, here a batch of motors just came in for projects I'm working on. Um, like I said, it's a bit messy, but such is life. Um, what I have decided on that I wanted to share with you guys is uh, I've been waiting to figure out where I'm going to put the welder, the welding table, um, and so the new equipment that I'm hoping to get, which for right now it's basically a, a bigger mill and an air compressor to support it. Um, some other things like a bandsaw, a vertical bandsaw, are, are important, but they're not as critical as to where they go in terms of the size they take and the, the weight uh, of them that requires difficulty of moving around. So. What I think I'm going to do, I had previously contemplated the welder in the corner where the fan is, that uh, that hole in the wall there passes through to the garage and quickly to the garage door, which would give me some ventilation. However, given the fumes and the splatter and such, I decided to put my welder out in the garage. I'll head out there, and this is um, a mess right now as well. But, um, and the idea is that this would not probably be used for a vehicle, but rather um, I would have my welder on a rolling or welding table on rollers somewhere in there. And then I think what I decided somewhat reluctantly is um, to put the Tormach right where you're looking. Uh, it, it fits quite comfortably. It would extend almost the full width and it would extend out to about where you see the piece of red wood there. Um, not quite that far. But the beauty of this is I don't have to deal with the door frame and the step up. The door frame on the inside is too narrow. I would have to take the frame out, which isn't a huge deal, but then I'm still only left with 31 and a half inches, which means, or 32 and a half, which means I'd have to take more of the Toramak apart than I would want to and they recommend. The electronics cabinet, I think one of the, I think the Y and maybe the X axis steppers, that's no fun. Plus I have to get a thousand pound machine over that hurdle. Um, and then I have a little bit of a height constraint in here. It would fit, but uh, it would be tricky to get it up uh, with the engine hoist. I'd have to, you know, go in between the two, the bar, uh, the ceiling joists and such. It would work, but then, you know, it's eventually got to get moved back out. And so what makes a lot more sense is take it right up in the garage and put it right there. No steps, no turns, no doors got plenty of height in here. Um, my con concern is sort of two things. One is the garage temperature, both how cold it gets and how much it varies between uh, cold and once things warm up, whether I'm using the mill or, or what. And then the second thing is other garage activities. I'd always planned for this now to be the welding uh, area, and obviously uh, you don't want weld splatter near your mill. So Still got to think about that. It may not be a big deal since I've got quite a few feet between um, where I'm standing and where the welder might go. 
I also wouldn't use them at the same time, so maybe I end up put it, excuse me, putting a cover or barrier between the mill and everything else. I'm still thinking about having this little area be shelving and my sheet metal stuff, punches and such. By the way, I picked up this very comfortable chair from Ikea. It's called the Moses chair, and I think it was $40, which is a steal. Um, but yeah, I think I'm still, or I'm still thinking about the dirty stuff, abrasives over here, which would require some sort of a division to keep the dust down. And then the question really becomes, <laughs> I, I'm now moving more stuff out to the garage, so what happens in here? So still a little bit of a TVD. Uh, wanted to update you on what I'm thinking. Um, also wanted to update you on the drill press. I am loving having a dedicated drill for the tapping head, very convenient. Um, what I'm no longer loving is my main drill press setup, which I've traditionally had the XY table and a cam lock vise. Here I've got another vise set on top of it. First of all, it's just a bit silly. I've got well over half my drill press taken up here by fixturing stuff. Um, I don't like the cam lock vise for a lot of things anymore because sometimes I'm working in closely and there isn't enough um, there isn't enough distance to clear a, a drill hole through the center. That's annoying. Sometimes I don't feel like it's quite as accurate as it should be or gri how well it grips. Um, so what I realized is it's time to change things up. I'll, I'll still use the camlock vise for some things for sure, but I decided to finally pick up a proper milling vise. This is a 5-inch uh, vise. I got it from Enco. It was only... Uh, on sale for $92 and free shipping, so really hard to beat that. I would love to buy a glass urn. I, I like what they do and I've heard great things about them on the forums, but I'm starting with this. Uh, my thought is that this is you know, a cheaper one with less um, quality probably behind it, and I'll use this for now, get used to it, and then if I do buy a Tormach, I don't think I'll buy their vice. I think I'd buy either a glass urn or maybe a Kurt and... Uh, but this would give me a chance to sort of learn the ropes with these vices. Um, the other great thing is it weighs about 50 pounds, which I like because it means what I can do is put it on my um, drill press platen there, and I can have holes self-aligned, but I don't need to do so trying to fight it with the XY table. That's not really the right way to drill. You can't force a drill bit into a hole. You have to let it sort of guide itself in and find the center. So I think this is going to be great. If I use it on the um, tapping head, it'll be great too because when you reverse a tapping head, it tries to pull the workpiece up with it. And you can try to fight it by pushing down on the workpiece, but it's hard and you've got a lot of other things going on. So the weight of this I think will be great. Most importantly, though, is I'm excited to start working with soft jaws. Um, this one, this I took this apart right now because I'm cleaning it up because it's brand new. But um, for those of you who don't know, these are a standard set of vice jaws. But what you can do is make soft jaws. You could cut your own steel or you can buy these blanks that are millable so they're not hardened. And you make custom little fixtures that would hold whatever part you wanted. So if you wanted to have a soft jaw that held, say, this part in a certain f way every time so that you could either drill it on a drill press or mill it, or you can even create uh, soft jaws for more complex parts. For instance, I just grabbed this out of a scrap pile, but let's say you needed to drill the face of this every time perpendicular, and you can see you don't have square edges which would allow you to drill a hole perpendicular to that face easily, well, you could make a, make a set of soft jaws that this would actually set fit into, tighten yourself down, and then every time you're going to be drilling perpendicular to the plane. They're great for guys like us who um, may make more than one sometimes, but you don't have enough uh, demand, say, to have dedicated, you know, true fixtures versus a vice fixture, or you're making parts in batches and you may not come back for a few months, something like that. Basically, you can take a 50-pound uh, relatively expensive piece of equipment like this vise and swap out what you're doing with it. So I will be sure to post um, an example as soon as I do a project with soft jaws. And that's all I've got for now. Thanks, folks.